Once I pull that helmet down, it's pull the trigger and go. It's a little bit of dynamite in your hands. Alex is a character. He's funny. <laughs> He's a doctor. Now it's showtime. He likes things big. Well, you guys have just been cooking today. Let's get to it. He has a son. That's so cool. I might just take a little nap. If you sit there for 10 minutes, you have to buy it. So Alex, what do you think? I have no words. This is totally wild. In the mountains of northern Montana lives a family of master craftsmen. L.V. Miller and his wife Rebecca have six children, but this Amish family don't ride horse and buggy. They use cell phones. I gotta grab my technology. And power tools. Timber! Oops. L.V. heads up one of the biggest cabin businesses in Montana. His team handcraft one-of-a-kind log homes, ship them to families across the country, and fit out their interiors, turning dreams into reality. It's January, and in Montana, Elvie's team is gearing up for the start of the cabin building season. We've got a crew hand peeling logs by the truckload, a crew on the pad assembling homes, and crews out on site all across the state. Elvie and interior designer Abby have a busy few months ahead. Looks great. I've just had a call from a man in Kansas about a new log home on a beautiful lake. I'm excited to get going on this one. Fishing, swimming, fireworks in the summer. Yeah. What could be better? My name is Alex Neal. I live in rural southwest Kansas. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I'm Nico. I'm my dad, Alex's son. I'm in eighth grade, and I play video games, and occasionally go fishing with my dad and my <laughs> uncle. About a year ago, I began to dream of a getaway from my place in town. I found the lot here at Elm Mills in Kansas. When I was growing up, I used to visit a log cabin with my family, and those were some of the best memories of my childhood. Key features in this cabin that I envisioned would be lots of light, big windows, open access to the outside, a loft, a place to retreat, and uh, a garage that can accommodate a couple half-ton trucks. My ultimate goal is to have the cabin completed by the 4th of July. And one of Nicholas's and my favorite activities is shooting off fireworks and watching them. LV's crew offer a one-stop shop for clients like Alex, building and fitting out cabins. Along with our build team, we work with an interior designer called Abby. She helps transform the shells into nice, warm, cozy homes. Hi, Elvi. When she's finished with her designing, they look amazing. The interior design log cabins is interesting because you're working with such large scales. So what we have to do is we have to make sure the furniture doesn't look too small compared to the massive logs that will be on the walls and the ceilings. Hello, everyone. Hey, I'm Elvi. I'm Alex. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. So Alex, tell me a little bit more about your lot. So it's on a lake, right? It is, right at the very bottom of the lake. And from there, you can pretty much see the entire expanse of the wow. lake. Wow, this is great. And I have a dream of what my ideal log home is. What I don't know is how that translates into reality. I've got some plans that we prepared for you. This is about, you know, close to 2,000 square feet. LV has designed a cabin that will make the most of Alex's lakeside lot. The 2,000 square feet will be spread over two floors. A large deck will wrap around the house, which will be great on long summer evenings. Double doors will lead into the open plan living space, which will have a high cathedral-like ceiling. Up the stairs there will be a loft with master bed and bath. The wide bank of windows will have great views of the lake from the landing and let lots of light into the living space. 
The kitchen will be at the back of the house, along with a second bedroom for Alex's son. The main entrance will lead out to a double garage across the road. But building this luxurious lakeside home in time for the 4th of July fireworks is going to be a massive challenge for LV and Abby. This is really great. I can see how this begins to capture what everything we've been speaking about. Okay, well we got some work to do. Let's do this thing, it's gonna be beautiful. The meeting with Alex was amazing. He's a lot of fun. The big challenge is to get his house ready for the 4th of July. At Eldie's yard in northern Montana, the build crew is starting work on Alex's dream home. With only four months until the 4th of July deadline, the team has to work fast. It'll take 250 trees to build this house. First, they come out of the forest with the bark, and then the bark is taken off, milled on the mill, and then the boys can get those chainsaws fired up and ready to go. Hey, Joseph. Yeah. You want to come down? Let's talk about Alex's plans. Oh, yeah, yeah. My nephew, Joseph, is in charge on the pad. He'll also be the foreman on site in Kansas. We've drawn the garage separate across the road, 30 by 30 garage. Yeah, looking forward to building it. Elby's crew must cut all the logs for Alex's cabin to size and piece the walls and roof together to check everything fits. This will be the corner of Alex's garage. That's how we make notches. All the logs are numbered and the cabin is dismantled so they can be trucked to Alex's lakeside lot in Kansas. But before LV and his crew head off to reassemble the cabin, they have to prepare for their annual auction. Every May we have a community auction and part of the proceeds go to our school. Our whole family's been involved for years. My second son, Jalen, has recently begun making benches and tables and I'm quite proud of him, and he's getting really good at it. Can we turn it over and see it? That's neat, wow. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. Jalen does remind me of myself at his age. I would make things out of wood. That thick slab is what I really like. There's definitely some negatives about Jalen, but they also probably come from me. The nut doesn't fall very far from the tree. It's a good piece, good job. Here's your part of the puzzle. We've finished preparing the logs for Alex's cabin, and today we're loading them on the trucks. It's a big house, so we hope it'll all go on. Probably gonna go right here, right where our feet are here, I'm thinking. Joe the trucker, he's a character. Yeah, he's, uh, he's kind of a wild man. He really cares about the house and getting the logs to the customer's site safely, so nothing falls off, so it's all in good hands. So here comes the fun part, is to stick your head in here and hopefully it don't come this way and crush you. Log homes, throw a lot of straps. Check, 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 always check straps. It's so important to have it tight because you don't want to end up killing somebody, you know. Their dream, no reason on delivering somebody's dream all crushed already. That's the sound you want to hear, that's tight. Well, is it all going to fit on, these two trucks? I think it is, it's gonna be tight. Be nice to get this job going. It's 1,500 miles from Elby's yard in Montana to Alex's lot. Joe will pass the northern edge of Yellowstone National Park through Wyoming, Nebraska, and south into Kansas. If all goes to plan, they should be there in three days. Let's go. With the logs on their way, Alex is visiting Abby's design workshop and store in Bozeman, Montana. 
We opened the design workshop about a year ago. Building a home can be really stressful. What we like to do is just make it fun. As a guy, the essentials are where's the refrigerator and where can you put your dirty clothes? Our goal with Alex's cabin is to have it be a little more refined and not to be the cliche log cabin. When you're doing these large scale homes, stuff just shrinks. And that's like a sectional over here. It seems large in scale, but when you put it exactly. next to your logs. That's beautiful. It has depth to it, so it's comfortable, but then it also. It is that. I might just curl up and take a little nap. You might need to. This is great. But if you sit there for 10 minutes, you have to buy it. You know that, right? Sure, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Abby has drawn up a design for the inside of Alex's cabin. She knows that space management is important for such an open plan living space. She will use a four top table with a leaf so it can expand into a six top when Alex has company. Two club chairs will be able to enjoy the view of the lake or face a wood stove in the corner. A coffee table and sofa or chaise will allow Alex to kick his feet up and relax. Artwork will hang on the log walls throughout the cabin. And in the master bed there is enough space for both a seating area, as well as a king bed, two nightstands and a dresser. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Thanks. You also said you had a collection of rugs? Yeah, it's eclectic. Did you pick those up in travels? No, these were auctions. Oh, good. Mostly, because I, I love, I love. I love myself a good auction, oh, too. Oh, my goodness. But what we'll do is we'll keep a sofa really neutral, so then your rugs can basically be the artwork. That and would be so, brilliant. Oh, I love that. That gives me goosebumps. I love that kind of stuff. Oftentimes, people find it a challenge to try to bring in people's personal items. I actually think it brings a lot of personality, and that's what makes the design. So let's go check out some pieces on the floor. This piece right here is a warming lamp for an oil rig. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's not just industrial, it's like industrial rustic. But something like this would be really cool in your living room, too. Oh, I know. The scale of your logs, this yes. wouldn't look that big in there. No. Small light fixtures are going to look like little pimples. I'm stoked to work with Alex. I think he's up for anything, which that's the best. It's 46 degrees and the clouds are turning dark gray and blue. You gotta be a little bit crazy to do this job. That's why I got my lucky fingernail. I used to have a lucky necklace, that broke, so then I started having bad luck and uh, my woman painted my thumbnail and now it's my lucky thumbnail. I've had good luck ever since. We're running from a storm right now. It's probably about 40 minutes behind us. With Alex's logs in transit, Elvie is having one final meal with his family before he sets off for Kansas. Breakfast is ready. Mornings are sometimes a little hectic, and it gets busy and a little bit of a madhouse sometimes. We've got to get some good food in our system because we have to go out and build some more log cabins today. It's definitely not like we have every morning organized schedule. It's not the way it is around here. <laughs> yeah, our two oldest are boys. Jaylen is 17, Andrea is 19, Ethana is 14, and then Verena is 12, and Dana and Victoria are six and four. My dad builds the best log cabins. Let's finish eating. I'm heading off to Kansas to build another log home. I'm on my way to Alex's lot in Kansas. It's gonna be tight because he wants this thing done by the 4th of July. But the location's awesome. The lake, trees everywhere, and it's kind of in a valley. A lot of birds you hear all the time. The Wild West, I don't know, it's not very wild anymore. The log house fits in here very well. You can see with the positioning of the cabin, the sun will pour right into those big windows. You can see out across the lake and the deck is gonna be a great place to sit out in the summer. The team is very fast. 
So Joseph Miller, my nephew, he's in charge of the building process here, the job foreman. Benjamin and Cornel are brothers, and they've been with us since 2000. And then there's my son, Jalen. So it's good to have big families to help with the work. Today we're starting the subfloor, the framing, the porch decks. And once the logs arrive, things really get going. Perfect timing. This is terribly exciting. I'm pretty stoked. This right here would be a typical site. You got trees over the road like this, and you really gotta be wary of the trees coming down. Joe's gonna be very careful not to damage any of the logs or his truck. Well, I haven't seen any low branches yet, so so far we're good. That sound you're hearing is trees oh, oh. brushing up against the antennas. Now we'll begin the next phase of the adventure. If it's possible, I'd like to try to offload the, the logs myself with the loader. <laughs> All right. Sure, this should be interesting. When somebody says, I've never ran a machine before, you can almost uh, expect anything. He's going to be really ginger, or he's going to be just a ramrod. Alex is a character. He's a professional. He's a doctor. But it's one thing to take a knife to someone on an operating table. It's another set of skills completely to drive a forklift. I guess it's every guy's dream to operate heavy equipment. A little bit more slower than not. Right oh. Whatever button that is, that ain't no good. And as you see in that log there, that's what we call not being ginger. You got it. This is a great adventure. I mean, how many times do you get to unload two semi-tractor trailer loads, tons of lumber, in a single day? Could be worse. I only got scared twice, so. Oh, 19 to go. <laughs> this place is awesome. It's the water here, the creek coming in, and your house looking out over it. It's absolutely amazing. I'm just in awe of it. To meet Alex in the lot is real special. I think coming down here is very relaxing to him, and. We want to make sure he's not a stressed out doctor cutting these people up and stuff. It'll be a great place to bring my son as well. Yeah. I can't wait. That's going to be Create awesome. Create memories, absolutely. Hopefully someday some grandkids, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. <laughs> God give this man some grandkids in the right time. Yeah. In Kansas. The crane arrives to help Elvie's team assemble Alex's cabin. Alex has a pretty big cabin here, and the crane's charged by the hour, so we have to work pretty fast. Right here, first log. It's always fun to set the first log. From that point, everything goes faster. Our logs are all numbered in rows, one, two, three, four, as we stack them up. And then ABC as we go around horizontally. So it's a very simple system. The second row is where we drill all our, our holes for, for electrical outlets so that later, uh, when it's all covered up and the walls are up, we can cut in and hit that hole and run the wire. After row two, we start really moving. The first day is always a big day, and it's exciting to get the cabin started. Back in Montana, Abby is visiting a local craftsman to design a chandelier for Alex's dining room. Ira. Hey, Abby Darda. I need to talk to you about a project. I've been working with Ira for a couple years now, and he can make the most simple things into the most interesting things I've ever seen. So hopefully we'll be able to put together a great light fixture for Alex. What do we got? I got a couple old wheels back here. I got some old metal ones. I think the wood would be good because it'd be a little softer than just doing all metal, you know? Ira's incredible. <laughs> he works a lot with found objects. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from is just all this waste that people just throw in the dump and uh, make something nice. 
Let's, let's take it out and look at it. A lot of the pieces that Alex has shown me that he has in his home are from his travels. It's the same thing with Ira's pieces. He goes out and collects them and they all have stories. Look at that. Look at this hub on there. It's it's already welded on. What this kind is, of what kind of car is that? What is that? International. So how can we soften this a little bit? Is there something we could add? What's that glass from? It's from an old oil lantern. Yeah. From somewhere. Yeah. Cool. It's so pretty. And how are we gonna light this guy? I've been using little LEDs, kind of are a little more modern. I like it to be old and feel like it was made in the 1700s and then throw some LEDs in it and just freaking go. And then we'll put one on each spoke. I was thinking every other spoke. Every other? Yeah. You know, it'd be it'd be all right to go oh, this way too. Oh, I love it too. there cuz then it would light up. You can That'd light up cool. your spokes Let's do a and couple stuff. Of that, those then too. Yeah. How are we going to hang it from the ceiling? But like what is that thing right there? These are hames. Hames are for going around the neck of a, a draft horse that pulls wagons. Okay. So it's pretty suitable. Never really driven a team with a wagon on it, but I've rode shotgun a lot, and uh, they're pretty cool. I was just thinking of welding them. Oh, he's gonna love this. Yeah, they're beautiful, uh, Hames. What are they called again? Hames. Hames? Mm. I feel like it's gonna be a really nice piece. I want it to be more of a sculpture than a light fixture. Abby's excited about it. And that makes me excited. One week into the build, Alex visits his lot to check the team's progress. Wow. Where did that come from? There wasn't a cabin there yesterday, and suddenly it looks like a cabin. Oh my goodness. Wow. What an amazing place. There's no way to anticipate or even imagine how much these guys get done in a day. Wow. The staircase is extraordinary. It's beautiful. It echoes the, the exterior logs. It's perfect. Yeah. This is incredible. Boy, you guys have just been cooking today. Even though this had been a passion and a dream over the past eight months, only now does it become real and tangible and taking on its own life and its own form, and it's amazing. I'm, I'm totally jazzed. Initially, I had justified the cabin as a place that I might come down and live in the future if it worked out. But now, looking at this structure, you couldn't keep me from living here. I'll be moving within six months. It'll be home. Hey, Alex. How you like it? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? It's like a new adventure. I can't imagine anyone doing this better. You know, my only real concern, the detached garage. If the garage is across the street from your cabin, then in the dead of winter, you're carrying your groceries through the snow and not directly through the garage into the back of your kitchen. And so at present, what I'd like to do is incorporate the garage and make it part of the house. I'm going to rely heavily on Elvi to help me to sort that out. In Kansas, Alex has asked Elvi for a last minute change to his log home. Alex has given us a little bit of a curveball here. Originally, the plans were drawn with the house being separate and the garage being separate across the road. We're going to scrap that idea. Alex has decided he wants the garage attached. Elvi's team will have to extend the current walls to create a 30 foot by 30 foot double garage. This will allow Alex to drive straight into the cabin and walk directly into the main living space. The attached garage will add extra complexity to the build, so Elvie's team will have to work fast to finish the cabin in time for the 4th of July fireworks. I think with the way we've changed the plans to the attached garage is definitely the best solution for Alex. It's got about 10 foot walls. It's also a cathedral ceiling. It's gonna be a very nice place for him to park his vehicles in his tools and his toys. He likes things big. We work really hard on site. We put in long hours, and the boys get these big appetites. We got to feed these boys the way they really work. The Amish diet consists of a lot of protein, high carbs, 
A lot of cholesterol, fat, and salt. But most Amish people are skinny because I guess they work it off. This is real Montana elk burgers. Elk is very lean, it's almost fat free. Very, very healthy. There's no fat people in our community, I can tell you that. Ooh, a lot of pepper. Okay, got it. A little barbecue sauce. We're getting close. I don't know what's going on with this cheese. Might not look good, but it's gonna be awesome. Hey guys, it's time for lunch. You wow. can't get them to stop for lunch. You can't get them to stop for evening. They just keep on going. Hey guys, we're, at, we're breaking for lunch. Burgers are on. Come and get it. The only thing better than cooking elk burger is eating it. He's a pretty good cook. He makes good burgers, but I don't think he's better than my mom at cooking. She's much better. She's better looking, too. It's good. So now the logs are up, the garage is attached, but it's still going to be tight to get this thing done by the 4th of July. At this point where the boys are working quite high on the roof, it's important that they stay safe so they need to wear harnesses. It can be dangerous work up there. I mean, I don't like heights really, but I kind of get used to it after a while. Oh, they got the wrong log on there. It's, it belongs on this side of the roof, so Jalen's got a big job ahead of him. Cornel is probably the biggest joker. He likes to get under your skin. We love harassing the younger guys, you know, just to keep the stuff alive. Keep them on, on their the toes. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Cornelius and Benjamin are from a Swiss Amish background. They're from a great family, and they love to sing, and they like to do that Swiss yodel. It's in their DNA. There's four Girard brothers, and we yodel a lot together. We learned yodeling through our dad. You know, my dad yodeled many times. I remember we'd be going down the road with a horse and buggy, almost dark, and you'd see the horse's head bobbing, and, and dad was just a yodeling away. You have wrought. I stand in awe of your creation with overflowing joy and praise. Hold a lady, oh, the hold a lady, oh, hold a lady, hold a lady, oh, hold a lady, oh, hold a hold a lady, oh, hold a lady, hold a lady. The inside's coming together very well. Got the half arch there, which that's cut with a chainsaw. And that's a really neat feature. The kitchen is going to be underneath there, and then that wall carries those loft joists coming out. Another feature, of course, is the big log rafter, the A shape. That is makes that whole upstairs open into the loft. See how strong this is? It's not going anywhere. The front is, is custom made for Alex. He wanted lots of glass, so both of these openings are large sliding glass doors so he can see out into the water. So this will be a very light room. So it's gonna be awesome. Elvie's crew has taken a break from Alex's cabin to head home to Montana for their annual community auction. The auction's a great opportunity to come together. It's people bringing crafts and things to sell and buyers wanting to buy things, plus a lot of good food, fellowship. Yum, yum. Some of the furniture is very unique, one of a kind pieces. Listening to the auctioneers is almost like music, it's almost entrancing. Alex is coming up today for the auction, so it's going to be a lot of fun watching him. How are you? Good. Do you think you'll be bidding on some things? I'm afraid so. It's inescapable. This is a lot of fun. These, these guys make some amazing, amazing pieces. Yeah! 
Wow. Gives new meaning to Fifty Shades of Grey. There are four posters out of local wood, pine. But the pine isn't just milled and straight up. Some of it has galls, burls, knottiness, really interesting, peculiar shapes to it. Oh, my right. Jay, what are you going to do here? We got a queen size burl. Queen size burl bed. Jalen, build it. You got the young man standing right here. I'd say he done a pretty wonderful job there. There's definitely not another one in the whole state of Montana like this one. Unfortunately, when I go to auction, sometimes I'm swept away by the excitement and the enthusiasm of the moment, and uh, I just flat out get carried away. When the bidding started, yes, sir. What are you going to do here? Give me five hundred dollars. It was so fast and furious. Five hundred now, fifty. Five hundred. Now quarter. As soon as I jumped in the fray, it just picked up speed. Six hundred now. Seven now. Seven now. Eight now. Nine. There was no end in sight. Bid 900, 800, and now 850, sir. Come right back here. 855, 850 right there. Now 75, 75, 850, now 75. Solar right here, 900 bucks. I have no doubt in my mind that it was a great deal. It's a great bid. I was happy. What do you think? There's room here for several hats. <laughs> Today was marvelous. I caught the fever. So I came away with a bit more than I had anticipated or, or planned on, but all in all, I had a great day. Today's been one of the most successful auctions ever, and we raised enough money to run the school for the next year. At Alex's property in Kansas, all the walls are up and the roof is in place. The next challenge for LV and his team is to cut out the windows and doors. When it comes to cutting windows and doors out, I'm an animal. Once I pull that helmet down, it's pull the trigger and go. I can cut more accurately fast rather than slow, because I like to try to outdo the other guys. So we got this thing going on about who's faster and better. That would be me. It's a very complex operation. And today, I'm going to teach my son Jalen to do it. Jalen has never cut out a window or a door before, so we'll see how this one goes. It's a little bit of dynamite in your hands. Follow mark, a shallow follow mark first. It's real shallow. It's probably going to be a little bit stressful because there's no tolerance for mistakes. Saw that off. We'll go up as high as you can. That's good. First, cut the vertical, and then next, cut the angle. My father taught me, and so now I'm teaching that to my sons. That looks good. OK, now, now I take this off. This is the tough part. I definitely see myself in him. I think I was also kind of lazy until I was like 15 or 16, something like that. And then all of a sudden, I began becoming like a man, and that's what he's doing. Looks great. Good job on your first window. Hold this up so you can see it. Now we've got all the openings cut out. We're going to install the windows and doors and cut all the trim. Yeah, it's good up and down. Close it, just feel if it's feel natural. Yeah, it's good. Okay. All right. Keep all the Kansas wind out of it. Let's slide this bad boy in here. Hey, I'll get outside. There you go. It's amazing. Actually fits. Alex has chosen a very good brand of windows for his house. Perfect. His views are going to be great. OK, looks good. What do you think, Jalen? Looks pretty good. The windows with their views are looking great. There's great access through the doors onto the deck out to the lake. The cathedral ceiling in the loft is looking really amazing. The garage is pretty big. Now it's over to Abby to add the wow factor inside. I think we're at a great location. I think it'll be right directly over the table. Just arrived here at Elm Mills. Elvie's done a great job on the exterior. We got to get going, because it's going to be tight to get this done before the 4th of July. The chandelier is quite heavy, but um, luckily there are three electricians here to help us raise it up. Isn't that cool? 
I love the patina. Everything just adds to the look of the cabin. Oh, it turned out awesome. Cool. I'm super stoked. So. It looks great, guys. Thanks. What we've been able to do is pick and pillage through all his things, which I love. It's like a treasure hunt because he has so many incredible things. Some of the paintings are paintings that his mom actually did for him as a child on his birthday, which I think is really sweet. I think it just adds to the personality of the cabin. I'm most excited about somebody walking in and going, oh, this is Alex's home. The pieces Alex picked up from the auction are perfect. I think they're really going to fit into the design nicely. Sometimes with this handmade rustic furniture, it takes a little brute force to get it together. Now I gotta kick this again. Oh, there you go. Kick real hard. <laughs> I think Nico's gonna love it. Oh. <laughs> How's it feel? It's great. Oftentimes people will forget that the exterior can add square footage to the home. The great thing about the world we live in today is that we can find exterior rugs, we can find cushions, we can find sofas. What's really important to me is to bring in greenery, do with tables and planters that can create different heights. They're pretty awesome. It's beautiful. Cool, let's keep going. We got a lot to do. We just found this large log that I'm really excited to incorporate into the design. If we lift it up here. You could stick plants inside. Well, I think it's important to have found objects so not everything looks new. I have some sweet potato vine and some crimson gold here. Put them inside. That's amazing. Yeah, I think people think you need to go out and buy everything. There's things right in front of you. I love this. My wife would like this kind of thing. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, I hope Alex enjoys it. I can't wait to see Alex's reaction when he comes and sees the exterior and the interior of what Abby's done. So Nicholas, is the excitement building for you? Yeah. It's been abbeyized. Your jaw's gonna drop. I am so psyched, I can hardly wait. I have no idea what she's done at the cabin. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's so cool. It looks so nice and fancy. All right. Let's go. Whoa. Yeah, pretty much. This place is incredible. This is really cool. So Alex, what do you think? I think it's amazing. I think it's incredible. I can't wait to see the inside. Well, let's go check out the interiors, you guys. Whoa. Oh my. So what's your first impression? Wow, pretty much total wow. It's incredible, the whole place. I'm just trying to drink it in. It's amazing. You all have done extraordinary things. You know, my favorite part of the job was looking through Alex's pieces and getting to know who's actually gonna live here. So it's actually, everything you own, but just done up in a different way. I could have rearranged those things a thousand times and never come up with anything remotely like this. I think a lot of people just fill to fill space, and I think that's kind of a waste. I think if you're gonna put objects in your home, it needs to be objects that mean something to you or tell a story. I have no words, this is totally wild. That doesn't happen very often. No, rarely. <laughs> Amazing, totally amazing. How about touring the house now? Let's do it. Let's just head over this way. Holy Christmas. This is incredible. Nico, do you know what those are on the top? No, what are they? They're called hames, and they're, they go around the horse's collar at the pull. And I've hitched up many, many horses in my life with uh, the hames. Well, Nico, I want to go look at your room. To check it out. Cool, I can't wait. Whoa! Oh my gosh! It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this piece and I fell in love with it. It's like something out of a dream. 
Super cool. So what do you think of this garage, Alex? This is great. This is perfect. You like things big. Is it big enough for you? <laughs> I don't know about that big, but no, this is perfect. So you threw us a bit of a curveball on this attaching this garage in the house, but it was okay in the end. Here we are. I want a garage like this when I grow up. <laughs> Well, I think we need to check out your room, Alex. I think so, too. Let's go upstairs. How amazing is this? I thought it was really important to have an office area, a seating area, and your bed. And I think we were able to accomplish that. I really can't believe it's my, my bedroom. It's perfect. It's a beautiful space, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We put your desk here so you could look out and see the water. I also thought it was important to keep it really clean and minimal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did incredible. There's a lot going on with the logs and the grain, and so I wanted the bed and the artwork to be really quiet. I love the way you have the rugs on the floor where they're overlapped over each other. Yeah, you I've know. I've never seen that before. You know, I think people try to be so literal and everything has to line up so perfectly in life when I think layering and adding angles, it softens a little bit. Because everything is so refined that we put in here. It's not overdone, which I think is important. I think this room is better than my room. I'll flip you for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for them to be able to enjoy the space together and just the memories that they're going to make. So what do you think, Alex, overall? I think this is uh, like a dream come true. I'm relieved that they're happy with it, but I expected he would be. He's a pretty jolly old fella. Wow, you're acting like you live here. Well, I'm beginning to feel like I live here. Well, you look pretty comfortable. It's a hugely comfortable house. Good. It's perfect. A work of art, really. The craftsmanship, what you guys did, it's amazing. You guys really did a great job bringing an idea to life. Thank you, we appreciate it. And we got it done by the 4th of July, didn't we? Oh man, it was tight, but we sure made it. I can't wait to see the fireworks tonight. Me too, at showtime. I think the cabin that the team put together here is just what the doctor ordered. And every time I walk from one room to another, it's like, oh my God, it's so amazing, all over again. It was such an incredible opportunity to be part of making his dream come true.